paper for may june 2021 the second variant so let's get started let's look at the first question a particle of mass 0.6 kg is projected with a speed of 4 meter per second down a line of greater slope smooth a plane inclined at 10 degrees to the horizontal first of all this question is about work and energy and since it's a smooth plane so there is no work it's about simply principle of conservation of energy let me draw a inclined plane and it goes like this and like this and this is the top this is the bottom at the top you are projecting it so therefore there is kinetic energy at the top that is half into 0.6 into 4 square there is also potential energy at the top that is half actually it's not half it's m g sine of 10 degrees this angle is 10 degrees into the distance that is 15 meters so whatever the distance irrespective of whatever is the length of the plane the distance that it moves down the plane is 15 meters when we talk about the bottom the kinetic energy is half into 0.6 into v square and potential energy at the bottom it's always zero since it's a smooth plane total energy at the top should equal total energy at the bottom so half into 0.6 into 4 square plus 0.6 into 10 into sine of 10 degrees into 15 that should equal to half into 0.6 into v square always make a habit of simplifying your work 0.6 is all there so you can take 0.6 common out get rid of the 0.6 and eventually find the value of v question number two what is this question all about this question is all about either resultant or equilibrium in this scenario it's about resultant of forces so now they have given us information that there are three forces 34 and 30 and 26 newton sine of alpha is 5 over 13 sine alpha is 5 over 13 this 5 is the opposite this 13 is the hypotenuse therefore the adjacent would be 13 square minus 5 square under root that is 12 therefore cosine of alpha s12 over 13 you can either draw a triangle you can either use identity that is up to your creativity similarly sine of alpha is 8 over 17 sine of alpha is 8 over 17 again 8 is opposite 17 is hypotenuse therefore the adjacent should be 17 square minus 8 square under root I think this comes out to be 15 let me double check so 17 square uh, 17 into 17 that is 289 minus 64 that's 225 yes I am correct this is 50 so therefore cosine of alpha is if one is alpha the other one is theta so the first one is alpha and the second one is theta so let me correct myself so this is theta this is theta so sine of theta cosine of theta is 15 over 17 so you got four pieces of info and those four pieces of info are first of all sine alpha is given cosine alpha is this similarly you have in blue i can write it sine of theta is this cosine of theta is this so this is the four pieces of info 
and then it says find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the forces now keep in mind you don't need the angles you don't have to worry about the accuracy the question is designed in such a way that the calculation will be extremely simple so now if i resolve the forces this theta is with the vertical so this time the vertical component would be cosine so this is cosine and this one would be cosine so let me first label this so this one is 34 cosine theta that is 34 and cosine theta is 15 over 17 so 15 over 17 simple calculation 17 ones are 17 twos are this comes out to be 30 newton this one is 26 cosine alpha that is 26 what is cosine of alpha that is 12 over 13 13 ones are 13 twos are 2 24s are 2 into 12 is 24 newton this thing is done now let's resolve it horizontally so something like this uh, let me choose another color one is like this and the other one is like this they both are moving in this direction so now this one at the top that is 34 sine theta so that is 34 into 8 over 17 34 into 8 over 17 that comes out to be 16 newton this one is 26 sine alpha so sine of alpha is 5 over 13 26 into 5 over 13 so that comes out to be 10 newton and this 30 newton is already originally there so let me label this thing that is 30 newton now when i take care of the horizontal forces so if i add it all up horizontally 30 is to the right 16 is to the left 10 is to the left so 30 plus 16 30 actually minus 16 and 10 so 30 minus 26 that is equals to 4 newton similarly upwards is 30 downwards is 24 so vertically upward is 30 downward is 24 this comes out to be 6 newton double check your working if everything is all good so this is 4 along the x-axis and 6 along the y-axis so basically this so happens that it resolves like this this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component like this so this is 4 newton this is 6 newton the resultant would be emerging out from the middle so the resultant would be something like this so this is r so therefore r square is equals to 4 square plus 16 square 16 4 square plus 6 square 36 plus 16 that is 52 that is root of 52 newton whatever the decimal value is let this angle be beta so therefore tangent of beta that is 6 over 4 so therefore hence you will find the value of beta so tan beta is 6 over 4 and hence you can find the value of beta so the value of beta comes out to be 56.3 degrees 56.3 degrees so uh, they are asking for the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the three forces so this is root 52 newton making an angle of 56.3 degrees above positive x-axis so that is the working for this particular part question number three what is this question all about a ring of mass 0.3 kg is threaded on a rough horizontal rod so let me draw a rod that is like this and mass is 3 kg so let me draw a ring first so therefore this is a ring and uh, coefficient of friction is this much 8 newton force exits at an angle of 10 degrees above the horizontal in that same vertical plane so therefore this is like this and this is the force that is acting upward so this is f actually this is 8 newton and this is making an angle of 10 degrees 
this weight acting down it's 0.3 g and what else is there uh, there should be a normal reaction force of course this is r there should be a frictional force that should be to the left that is f max and is there anything else yes there is the resultant the resolution the components of this force so let me choose the orange marker and this is like this and this one is like this so therefore this is 8 cosine 10 degrees this is 8 sine 10 degrees and uh, it's gonna move so therefore it's gonna be accelerating and then kinematics will come in a little bit later now first of all r plus 8 sine 30 is equals to 0.3 g r plus 4 is equals to 0.3 into 10 that is uh, is there any other force that i'm looking for so r plus 8 sine 10 oh it's not 30 it's 10 so this is 10 degrees that is why it was coming out to be negative so that's why i got shocked a bit so this is 10 degrees is equals to this it is this thing also so r plus something uh, in decimal is equals to 3 hence you can find the value of r that thing is done r comes out to be 1.6108 1.6108 1 f max is equals to mu r mu is uh, 0 0.8 and r is 1.6108 when we multiply this thing this comes out to be 1.28865 1.28865 now it's accelerating that means 8 cosine 10 degrees 8 cosine 10 degrees minus f max is equals to mass into acceleration this is f max it goes over here this is 8 cosine 10 this is already known and hence you can find the value of a which comes out to be 21.966 and now it's kinematics so now you would say it started from rest and it's accelerating at 21.966 and uh, it's moving a distance of 0.6 meters so s is equals to 0.6 therefore s is equals to ut plus half at square ut would become 0 so 0 0.6 this is not 0.3 this is 0 0.6 so let me correct it so this is 0 0.6 and this is half into 21.966 t square and hence you can find the value of t and the value of t comes out to be 0.234 seconds so this question is also done question number four so in this paper what we will do is that we will also have a look at the exam report after we are done with all the questions so now question number four let's see what is this question all about a particle of mass 12 kg is stationary on a rough plane so this is a rough plane inclined at an angle 25 pulling force of magnitude pulling force of magnitude p newton x at an angle 8 degrees above the line of greatest slope the force is used to keep the particle in equilibrium mass is 12 kg coefficient of friction is 0 0.3 find the greatest possible value of p that means they could have also asked for the least possible value now how do we know when the greatest possible value will occur or the least possible value will occur so let me draw a diagram and let me label few things on it so first of all let me draw a scenario this is the particle and what else is there first of all this is the horizontal so p is something like this so this is p like this let me make it a little bit thinner so that is p so now this angle is 10 degrees so this needs a resolution this is p cos 10 degrees 
and this is p sin 10 degrees so this is p sin 10 degrees what else is there there is a force this way this is r there is a force acting down that is m g cosine theta so this is m g cosine of 25 degrees this is this thing. this is 25 degrees what else is there the weight component acting downwards so let me choose another color so let me choose this thing weight component acting downwards that is like this so this is m g sine 25 take a little a little bit of patience and label it all correctly now there are two options it's an equilibrium so there are two options the first one is it's about to move up versus about to slide down if it's about to move up the rule is the force the frictional force is going down and the other scenario is the frictional force is going up because friction always opposes motion so this is f max and this is f max now before i proceed let me first make r the subject so r plus p sine 30 is equals to 12 g cosine 25 so r is constant irrespective of the scenarios so this is scenario 1 and this is scenario 2 so first let me make r the subject r is equals to 12 g cosine 25 minus p sine 30 and then f max is mu r and mu is how much mu is 0 0.3 and r is 12 g cosine 25 minus p sine 30 and of course it will be in terms of p so this is f max let me move it a little bit more to the side now what is it asking the greatest possible value if we talk about the first scenario so in the first scenario we would say that f max is down so p cosine 10 degrees is equals to f max plus m g sine theta 12 g sine 25 this is scenario one and in the second scenario we have it's about to move up it's about to slide down so f max is up so p cosine 10 degrees plus f max is equals to 12 g sine 25 in other words uh, they are asking for the greatest possible value so p cosine 10 degrees is 12 g sine 25 minus f max which value of p would be bigger the left hand side is the same in both this and this is exactly the same in the first one there is a plus sign so in this scenario p would be having a greatest value and in this scenario because of this negative sign p would be having a least value so now you can generalize and you can say when the situation is about the greatest value it's about to move up so situation one p would be greatest when it's about to move up because f max would be down and when it's about to slide down that would be the least value of the applied force so that's how this question is to be done it's all about now plugging in the values simplifying it and then you get the answer next question this question is about it looks like it's about power it's about that force thing and uh, something more or less the same thing and then energy so therefore let me label this particular uh, question so this is about power 
and F is equals to MA and a little bit of energy. Now let's get started with this. It says a car of mass 1250 kg is pulling a caravan of mass 800 kg along a straight road. So the very first thing is about straight road. This is car 1250. This is caravan 800. The resistances to the motion of car and caravan are 440 and 280 respectively. So therefore this one car is this thing. Let me choose another marker. Car 1250 and 440 and the caravan 800 and 280. Now it says the car and the caravan are connected by a light rigid tow bar. So now they have a connection. And that connection is, it's like a connected particle. So it's power and F is equals to MA and it's about connected particle. So now the car and caravan move along the horizontal part at a constant speed. So move along a horizontal part of the road at a constant speed of 30. Calculate the power developed by the engine. Given that this power is suddenly decreased by 8 kilowatt, find the instantaneous deceleration and the tension in the tow bar. So this is 4 into 6 marks for this one. Now let me draw a diagram and uh, something like this. And let me draw two particles on it. So this one is the car and this purple one is the trailer and there is a tow bar connecting the two so that is this bar like this so therefore this is the tow bar connecting the two so tension tension and this is the forward force that is power over velocity which is 30 what else is there there is this is car let me label it this is caravan and there is a force, resistive force, that is 440. And there is a resistive force, which is 280. And uh, anything else, uh, there is nothing else. Now, it's moving at a constant speed. So, if I want to write the equations. So, for car, power over 30 minus tension minus 440 is equals to mass into acceleration which is 1250 into 0 and for the caravan this is tension minus 280 is equals to mass I think that's 800 into acceleration which is 0 so I don't need to form the equation of a system in this scenario because uh, first of all what are they asking us yeah i can form the equation also why not so let me first add it up so therefore power over 30 minus 440 minus 280 is equals to zero power over 30 is 440 plus 280 therefore power over th power equals to 30 multiplied by this the sum of these two and let me grab my calculator so therefore when I multiply this comes out to be 21600 watts but they're asking in kilowatt so that is 21.6 kilowatt that is the answer for this particular part and it's moving at constant speed so therefore acceleration is 0 meter per second square now this it says it's the same diagram don't have to draw another one the power is suddenly decreased so therefore what is the new power the new power is 21600 minus 8000 so let me grab the calculator 21600 minus 8000 yes it's 8000 this comes out to be 13600 now let me form equations again Power is now 13,600 minus tension minus 440 is equals to 1250 into 0. Uh, 1250 into A, it's no more 0. And tension minus 280 is equals to 800 into A. Again, add the two equations. 
and what do you have 13600 minus 440 minus 280 is equals to 12 plus 8 20 50 into 8 so 13600 minus 440 minus 2800 this is 280 actually so this is 280 minus 280 divided by 2050 this comes out to be 6.28 if I am not mistaken so the acceleration is coming out to be negative it should come out to be negative I think so I think might have made some mistake that this 13600 divided by divided by so I forgot this 30 I forgot this 30 and now let me do the calculation of all over again so therefore this is 13600 divided by 30 which is 453.33 minus 440 minus 280 and now it's negative divided by 2040 2050 this comes out to be negative 0.13 negative 0.1300 meter per second square and it makes perfect sense because now it's decelerating find the tension in the tow bar i can use equation 2 tension minus 280 is equals to 800 into negative 0 0.1300 so let's multiply it with 800 it's a negative value add to it 280 so this comes out to be 175.93 so t is 175.93 and you should write it to correct to three significant figures 176 newton rounded off to 3 sf so both parts are done and this is horizontal so that is six marks two plus four is six now it's three plus two is five so another five marks now what does it say it says the car and the caravan underline it all over again the car and the tra uh, caravan now travel along a part of the road inclined at sine inverse 0 0.06 in other words sine of theta is 0.06 the car and the caravan travel up the incline at a constant speed with the engine of the car working at 28 kilowatts. Find this constant speed. Draw a diagram. So this is the incline like this. And draw this thing, the car and everything else. So the car was in red. And uh, why no color was there? This is the car this is the caravan and it's joined like this and the forward force is 28,000 divided by V again it's constant speed so this is 0 meter per second square this is tension this is tension the everything because it's in the first paragraph it's uh, tr uh, true throughout the question so 440 and 280 so this is 280 newton this is 440 newton what else is there now it's the weight component so that is something new so the weight component for this one is 800 g sine of how much theta and sine of theta has a value and this one is 1250 g sine of theta the value of sine of theta is this much now can I calculate T separately yes and then plug in the other one or I can calculate the equation of the system so 2800 28000 over V minus tension minus 440 minus 1250 G sine theta equals to 0 and the other one tension minus 800 G sine theta minus 280 equals to 0 make it into a single equation so therefore 28000 divided by v minus 440 minus 280 minus 2050 g sine theta equals to zero hence you will find the value of v which comes out to be after calculation 14.4 meter per second rounded off to the uh, correct level of accuracy so that's how this thing is done what else does it say now this is just separate find the increase in potential energy of the caravan in one minute 
So now in one minute, what is happening? Now, first of all, one minute is 60 seconds. The speed is constant 14.4 meter per second. Therefore, the distance covered is 14.4 into 60. Let me evaluate this. That is 14.4 multiplied by 60. This comes out to be 864 meters. This is the distance that they travel up. So this is along the plane. So therefore, the change in potential energy, it's m of the caravan. It's only for the caravan. That is 800 into g into sine theta into distance along the plane. That is 864, 800 into 10 into 0.06 into 864. And that joules is the change in potential energy. So this thing is also done. Let's move to question number six. Now, is this the last question or the second last? Is the second last. So now, question number six, it says, a particle A is projected vertically upwards from level ground with an initial speed of uh, 30 meter per second. So that is the first thing, first piece of info that we get. Now it says at the same instant, another particle B is released from rest. So let me just draw a small diagram. This is that vertical thing. And this is like the ground. And uh, point A is uh, from the ground. It's we are throwing it up. So particle A is upwards. So therefore, particle A is like this. And it's being thrown upwards. So this is going up with a speed of 30 meters per second. So this is particle A. Particle B is released. So particle B is released something like this. So this is particle B and it's released. And this difference in height is 15 meters. Now it says during the subsequent motion A and B collide and coalesce to form particle C. Find the difference between the two possible times at which C hits the ground for 8 marks. So now this question is about kinematics and it's about momentum. And let me tell you it's not an easy question because there is too many steps involved all of a sudden for 8 marks. First thing is the kinematics part. So let me focus on the kinematics part first. That is find when and where do they meet? What were the velocities at that instant? So first of all, you would say for particle A, you would say uh, SA is equals to UT plus half minus 10 into t square. You don't know the time at which they meet. For particle B, it's released from rest. That is 0, half plus 10 t square. A is going up, acceleration is negative. B is going down, acceleration is positive. So SA simplifies and SB, they should add up to 15. First simplify, 30 t minus 5t square. So this is s of a, this is s of b, it is equal to 15, therefore t comes out to be 0 0.5 seconds. So after half second, they collide. What are the velocities at this instant of each particle? What is the height of each particle above the ground? So velocity of a, v is equals to u plus a t, that is 30 plus u plus a which is minus 10 into 0 0.5 this comes out to be 25 meter per second and velocity of b this is uh, 0 plus 10 into 0.5 this comes out to be 5 meter per second therefore va is actually going up so let me va was going up 
and this 5 meter per second was going down when they collide. What else can I find? I can find the height of each particle. So I can find 1 and subtract. That's also an option. Height of A, that is uh, S is equals to UT plus half AT square. So that is 30 into 0 0.5 plus half into minus 10 into T square. And I'll use a calculator. And similarly, height of particle B, that is uh, UT is 0 half into 10 into 0 0.5 square. So therefore, this is uh, 10 divided by 8, which is 1.25. This is easy to calculate without a calculator. Therefore, HA comes out to be 13.75 meter. So HA was the height above the ground. And this is the height from the maximum to this level. So basically, my calculation will be based on 13.75. So now this is all the kinematics that I've done. Now, let me draw a vertical line to separate this region from the rest. So this is like this and something like this. Let me just make it smaller. Now, the next part. This time, now I'll be working on the concept of momentum. So I can even work on this side. So now let me work on momentum. This is basically step number two. Kinematics is step number one. So now for momentum. Uh, okay. So now for momentum, they are asking the mass of one of the particle is twice that of the other. So have you read the statement? This was very interesting. They have not given the masses. The mass of one of the particle is twice the mass of the other particle. So scenario one. Mass of A. Scenario one. Option one. Either mass of A is 2m and mass of B is m. That's one option or the other option is mass of A is M and mass of B is 2M. One is twice that of the other. If we talk about the first scenario, what happens is that uh, momentum before collision is the same thing as momentum after collision and coalesce means becomes a single particle. So therefore, you would say mass of A is 2m and speed of A is 25 meter per second. VA is 25 and VB is 5, but it's going down. And again over here, VA is 25 and VB is minus 5 meter per second. And when they become a single particle, so mass of particle C is 3m and you are finding the velocity w. Mass of particle C is 3m and you are finding the velocity w. So two possibilities are there. For the first one, when I do the calculation, this is uh, mv 2m into 25 plus m into minus 5 equals to 3m into w. So 2m into 25, that's 50m minus 5m, 45m, 45m divided by 3m. So W is 45m divided by 3m or 15 meters per second. That's the first thing. The second scenario is m into 25, 2m into negative 5, that is 3m into uh, W. Let me write W still. So 25 minus 10 is 15, 15 divided by 3. So W is 15M divided by 3M or 3 meters per second. So now these are the two different scenarios that you get. You either have the speed or you either have the speed. So now momentum is also done. Now what is the third step all about? So now I have blocked this thing. 
now I'm going to the third step and the third and the final step is again about kinematics. So now this is step three and this is again kinematics. And now the working is for first scenario u is 15 that w is 15. So this is either wala scenario either so that w is 15 meter per second and it will go up a bit because there is some momentum of that particle it won't just drop down dead so this is 15 and acceleration is negative 10 and displacement is negative 13.75 because the scenario is something like this it would go up and then grow through all the way i mean fall all the way to the ground so therefore let me just draw a rough diagram to show the scenario. That means the scenario would be like this, like this, like this, and then it would fall all the way to the ground. So this is your particle C. And this displacement above the ground is 13.75 meter. So that is the scenario. So this is the concept of displacement that I've applied. This is concept of displacement. So concept of displacement, that is, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, and what else is negative? Displacement is negative. So displacement is negative, that is what we do in this particular part. So let me just uh, highlight it a bit, something like this. So that is the concept that we are applying. Then I apply this equation, that is, s is equals to ut plus half a t square minus 13.75 is 15 t plus half into minus 10 into t square use quadratic formula show all working i'm writing this show all working and then you find the value of this time is 3.74 seconds or what is the other option? The other option is that velocity is still 15 meter per second. No, it's not 15. I think it's 5. Uh, it's 3. That velocity is, uh, let me double check. So therefore, this is uh, 15 divided by 3. This is 5. So let me do the correction. This is 5. So this is 5 meter per second. So now W is 5 meter per second acceleration is still negative 10 displacement is still 13.75 meters meter per second square let me label everything this is meters this is meter per second square the same scenario and s is equals to ut plus half a t square and then negative 13.75 is equals to a 5t plus half into minus 10 into t square and again use the quadratic formula and t comes out to be 2.23 seconds therefore the difference between the two times that is 1.51 seconds that is the answer for this particular question so a very strong headed question not to be taken lightly so that was the question all about so this is question number six. I think one of the most uh, trickiest detailed question that involved kinematics and uh, at the same time it involved the concept of momentum. Now they have given a lot of space. I consolidated everything onto one page. Now question number seven. This looks like the last question hopefully that is about kinematics. And it's variable acceleration, differentiation, and integration. Now the question says, there are three equations. A particle moving in a straight line starts from rest at a point O and comes to rest 16 seconds later. So let me highlight this. It starts from rest at point O and comes to rest 16 seconds later. At time t seconds after leaving O, the acceleration of the particle is given by such and such. So there are three equations that they are 
that they have given us. So let me highlight each one of them. This is the first equation for 0 to 2 seconds. Then this equation, that's 2 to 4. Last equation, that is 4 to 16. There is no sudden change in velocity at any instant. What does this mean? It means if I calculate the value of velocity at 2, that same velocity would be also over here. It would be the same. Find the values of t when the velocity is 55 meter per second. A complete sketch of the velocity diagram. Find the distance traveled while it is decelerating. So now uh, the thing is, this is information of acceleration. And first of all, what we do is that, let me write down the conditions. So the conditions are when t is 0, v is 0, s is 0, that is from the first sentence. And when t is 16, v is still 0. So this is something important that they have given us. These are two conditions. Now, we are not sure which particular acceleration equation will give me the correct answer. So what we do is that we start with each one of them. First scenario, that is the orange scenario. So this is equation 1. Velocity is integral of 6 plus 40 dt. That is 60 plus 40 square over 2 plus a constant of integration c. If I plug in t is 0, v is 0, therefore c comes out to be 0, therefore velocity is 60 plus 2t square. If I solve this equation 60 plus 2t square equals to 55, using a quadratic formula, what happens is that I get two values of time. t1 is minus 6 minus 20.98 divided by 4 and t2 is minus 6 plus 20.98 divided by 4. This answer definitely is rejected because it's negative. And this answer, let me change the markers. This answer is again rejected because 20, yeah, 21 minus 6 is 15. 15 divided by 4 is something because it's outside of range. Which is the range? Which range are we talking about? It's not between 0 and 2. So that is the first one. Let's move to the second one. So... The second one, that is equation 2. So now we are moving to equation 2. And now it says velocity, acceleration is 14 between 2 and 4. So velocity is integral of 14 dt, that is 14 t plus c. And uh, I need one more thing. That one more thing that I need is that I have this equation of velocity and when t is equals to 2 velocity is 6 into 2 plus 2 into 2 square that comes out to be 20. So I can use this condition when t is 2 v is 20. So when t is 2 not 20 when t is 2 v is 20, 20 is equals to 28 plus c, therefore c comes out to be negative 8, therefore your velocity equation is 14t minus negative 8. When I want to solve this equation and uh, equal it to this thing, 14t minus 8 equals to 55, t comes out to be 4.5. Is 4.5 within this range? Again, not. So reject because 4.5 is outside of range. That means naturally the third equation is the suitable one. That is the pink one. So now the pink equation, that is the third equation. And let me just shift it somewhere over here. Somewhere. So let me resize it. So now the third equation, that is equation 3. 
which is velocity s16 minus 2t dt that is 16t minus 2t square over 2 plus k which is 16t minus t square plus k and now uh, what do we need to plug in so this time we have this condition when t is 16 v is 0 when t is 16 this condition v is 0 so 0 16 into 16 minus 16 square plus k so therefore k comes out to be 0 therefore your equation is 16 t minus t square now equate it to 55 so 16 t minus t square is equals to 55 minus t square plus 16 t minus 55 equals to 0 t square minus 16 t plus 55 equals to 0 when you solve this equation you get two answers so quadratic formula show all working you get t comes out to be 5 t comes out to be 11 and th these are the two perfect correct answers that you obtain so now it's a lot of working that we have to do uh, now it says complete the sketch of the velocity diagram find the distance traveled by p while it's decelerating and that will finish this paper now between 2 and 4 since the acceleration is constant this part is a straight line between 0 and 2 look at the equation the equation is this thing so the orange equation is this thing therefore this is like a quadratic with a positive coefficient of x square so therefore when i draw this thing it would be something like this let me make it more thinner something like this a curvature like this so this is 0 to 2 and then 2 to 4 is already done drawn and 4 to 16 is let me first label it so therefore this is 0 this is 4 this is 6 this is 8 or oh, 16 is already marked I haven't seen it so there is 16 and now this is uh, with a negative coefficient of x square so now this equation has a negative coefficient of x square so now it would be something like this so let me mark this point and somewhere over here or maybe even more up and something like this would be like this so that's how the graph for this part is drawn and uh, what else do we need then? Uh, this then it says we need to find the distance traveled while it's decelerating so it's decelerating in the last part so therefore displacement is integral of velocity which is the pink equation 16 t minus t square that is 16 t minus t square dt that is 16 t square over 2 minus t cube over 3 between the limits the limits are 4 and 16 so now there is one thing uh, when is it decelerating that is the question so now is it decelerating for the whole part or this is for three marks so now is it decelerating for the whole part or maybe just this part because now the thing is when we have a graph of negative so it goes like this there could be an acceleration portion there could be a deceleration portion so we don't know what is the decelerating part so it's not necessarily for what we do is that we have this equation for acceleration acceleration is 16 minus 2t so this is where the trick lies acceleration is 16 minus 2t acceleration equals to 0 therefore t comes out to be 8 that's when the acceleration is 0 derivative of dA by dt comes out to be negative 2 we already know that it's a maximum point that is for sure that means this is your turning point so from 8 till 16 it's gonna decelerate so now using this I can also uh, make my graph bit better so now this is 4 
this is 6, this is 8, so 8 would be a maximum something like this. And now the graph would be like this, and then it would be like this. So that is the right graph that's drawn. So now from 8 till 16, they are asking us to integrate, and then you integrate it, that's already integrate, uh, integrated, plug in the limits, and this answer that you get, that is the one using uh, differentiation and this is why it's decelerating. Now let me uh, go to the exam report and when I go to the exam report let's focus on this. Non-exact numerical answers are required correct to three significant figures. Uh, question 2, question 3, question 4 and so on and uh, Candidates are advised to carry out all the working to at least four significant figures. That is important. When answering a question involving a system of forces, a well annotated force diagram could help to make sure that they include all the relevant terms. So force diagram should be drawn. And uh, make sure such a diagram would be particularly useful. In questions such as question 7 in this paper, where acceleration is given as a function of time, it is important for candidates to identify that calculus must be used and it's not possible to apply the equations of constant acceleration. That's also thing. In this paper, I'll just focus till the general comments. And then in uh, the uh, live session, I would focus more on the exam report. The paper was generally well answered. Wide range of marks seen. The examination allowed candidates of at all levels to show the knowledge. Questions 1 and 2 were found to be most accessible. 6 and 7 proved to be the most challenging. That is true. This was most challenging. In questions such as question 2 and question 5b where the sign of an angle is given, it is not necessary to evaluate the angle. So work in fractions and that is the main thing. So that completes this paper. That is June, May, May, June 2021 variant 42. Take care.